Hi, my name is Tiago Vaquer, and today Federico Rossi and I will present a knowledge engineering framework for mission operations of increasingly autonomous spacecraft. This work is part of the Strategic Research and Technology Development Initiative at JPL. Future missions will have progressively advanced onboard autonomy capabilities, either to increase science return or simply achieve missions that cannot be operated through a traditional ground in the loop operation cycle. We can see advanced autonomy capabilities already deploy in space exploration, for example, in the Mars rovers, Earth Observation 1, and on the Asteria CubeSat technology demonstration. As autonomy capability become increasingly used on board, such as planning and scheduling, mission will face a paradigm shift in how ground operations team command and interact with the spacecraft, in particular moving from uploading a series of time command sequence to specifying intent with goals, for example, in the form of a set of high-level activities. However, current operational uh, capabilities, infrastructure, skills, processes were not designed for a spacecraft with such onboard autonomous capabilities and such a new paradigm. This brings to the fore the well-recognized challenges related to knowledge engineering for planning and scheduling systems, more specifically the process of eliciting, representing, and maintaining goals and activity models, spacecraft models, and environmental science models are quite challenging and require a careful design process and significant tooling. In this work, we study these specific knowledge engineering challenges on ground operations from the uplink and downlink perspectives. On the planning or uplink side, we focus on the ability of scientists, engineers, and operators to capture, specify, and communicate their intent and also predict the possible outcomes. On the evaluation or downlink side, we focus on their ability to perceive, interpret, and assess spacecraft state and action taken by the onboard autonomy for the next uplink cycle. To address these perspectives, we have been developing an integrated framework for mission operations planning for highly autonomous spacecraft, which is the main contribution of this work. We use a Neptune Triton tour mission case study to guide and instantiate the development of such framework. I should emphasize here that we are not developing onboard capability, but rather addressing challenges from the ground perspective when commanding autonomous spacecraft. To give you an idea about the scope of this project, in this picture you see the conventional operations workflow. On the right hand side, the uplink, we get telemetry data and we do processing of that data. We evaluate the flight system, uh, instrument health to understand what is the state of the spacecraft. And then on the left hand side, you see the uplink process in which from a set of target observations, we have to define a sequence of commands uh, to be uploaded to the spacecraft. Now with autonomy on board, the ground operations workflow will look a bit different, where the downlink side, we would have a larger effort on estimation with respect to spacecraft and instrument state and uncertainty quantification, as well as decision explanation, represented here in the orange boxes. On the uplink, represented in the yellow box, we would have now focus on go uh, specification, prioritization, and outcome prediction instead of command sequencing planning will be performed on board. The highlight yellow and orange boxes represent the scope of our work. Here's the mission operations planning workflow we propose for autonomous spacecraft focusing on key knowledge engineering processes. On the left, we start with intent capture, where goals and key performance indicators are elicited from scientists, engineers, and operators. We then generally perform out outcome prediction where the team explores different scenarios and uncertainty conditions to understand possible outcomes and science trade-offs, which informs goal refinement. Once goals converge, they are then uploaded to the spacecraft for execution. When data is downlink, what you see on the right, we go through performance evaluation where the scientists and engineers analyze the data from the spacecraft to estimate the state through inference and evaluate the autonomy performance comparing with the prediction data, which then informs intent and model update where goals and models are refined according to the data from the spacecraft and performance analysis. In this project, we use a flight proven planning system called MSEC as our main pl onboard planner. To support that envision workflow, we have been developing several tools and user interfaces both for the uplink and downlink processes, which we will describe in what follows. Let's zoom in the intent capture process. In our work, intent is captured and organized as science campaigns, that is, a coordinated set of observations that address a particular set of science objectives. We define a campaign as a set of goals, key performance indicators, and goals priorities. To capture science campaigns, we consider different perspectives, for example, scientists, engineers, and develop different tools to allow them to express their intent. Specifically, we will provide a tool for scientists and instrument teams to define campaigns, a tool for mission planners and engineers to define their goals in terms of test networks, and a tool for specifying uh, how the system should check and monitor key performance indicators. I will give a brief description of each one of these tools next. 
In our first tool, scientists and instrument teams express their intent by first searching for observations opportunities for their target phenomenon, given their specific instrument parameters and geometric constraints. For example, searching an arbitrary opportunities to measure gravity while passing over a storm on Neptune. While searching for an opportunity, the tool supports the identification of how unique and abundant the opportunities are, which provides key information to negotiation and prioritization of observations. For example, if there is only one chance to observe a particular plume with unique features, its, pro its priority would go up. Once these opportunities are found and identified, the observations are added to the corresponding campaigns as goals. Our second tool called Test Network Tool is a central piece in our intent capture process. Here, campaigns and goals are represented in the form of a hierarchical test network based on the MS Planner's input, which includes test definition, test instances, and their corresponding temporal resource and execution constraints. This tool is designed for mission planners, autonomy engineers, and spacecraft engineers to add their goals. It is also designed to merge the goals from the science planning tool described in the previous slide into the central test network representation of the mission. This particular tool leverages several existing work, including Rosetta, Mars 2020, GPO, and its simple. The third tool supports the specification of key performance indicators, which is the main mechanism to measure progress towards science objectives and the campaign goals specifying the test network tool. Here, users specify a mechanism to quantify progress against the goal, along with a required success criteria. For example, one can specify the measuring quantity as the number of hours of a particular observation and a desired number of hours as the success criteria. We provide a number of predefined templates for metric measurements to facilitate the definition process. These metrics are key in our framework for they help users to evaluate the impact of goal changes and analyze trade-offs when running outcome prediction, which we will see next. In the outcome prediction, we want to analyze the possible spacecraft performance we might get with a given set of goals. In this process, we first capture variability model, that is, users specify science and engineering parameters that can vary, and a model for that variability, for example, representing activity duration, certainty as normal distributions. Once variability information is captured, we use a Monte Carlo simulation approach for exploring different scenarios and investigating possible outcomes within the domain of user specified variability and the respective impact on mission progress based on key performance indicators. All the Monte Carlo simulation runs are stored in the database, and the results are then shown in a user interface for users to analyze the outcomes and impacts. In this tool, we can evaluate how likely the goals will be achieved what is the impact on the mission, and how that translates to progress towards the goal campaigns and science objectives. On the left, we can see a summary of the distribution of goals achievements and outcomes. On the right, we see a summary of the possible schedules and resource profiles. This particular tool allows plan inspection and analysis by allowing diving into, into particular cases and support users to identify what should or could be modified to improve performance. Let's now switch gears to downlink. At some point, we hear back from the spacecraft, and we receive time series data, event records, or EVRs, which are printFs produced by the onboard flight software, and data products, for example, images. On the ground, our job is to rehydrate this data to address three key questions. One, what decisions were made by onboard autonomy? Two, why were these decisions made? And three, what is the state of the spacecraft and of its environment? To do this, we created a recipe with three ingredients, the data from the spacecraft, the goals we sent up during uplink, and our knowledge of the spacecraft hardware and software in the form of models. We use these ingredients to reconstruct what happened and why through state estimation, and we display it to users to ensure they have a full understanding of the spacecraft state and its decisions. The key tool we use for this is state estimation. And our research is not in coming up with new algorithms for state estimation, but rather how to use existing ones and incorporate them in a downlink workflow. We use two classes of models and algorithms. For complex continuous variables and highly nonlinear models, we use factor graphs. We represent spacecraft states across time as nodes in a graph, and edges represent how states are related to each other. And we use nonlinear optimization to find the set of states that overall are the most likely ones for the spacecraft based on the measurements we received and the models we have. Now, factor graphs are state of the art in localization estimation in robotics, and a wealth of computational tools are available to solve them. And they're really easy to build. If you have individual models for pieces of your spacecraft, these are the factors, these are the edges. You just glue them together in code 
in the numerical solver, we'll exploit problem sparsity. Sometimes you have simpler problems where the states are all discrete, and for those, we use hidden Markov models, or HMMs. HMMs are great, for example, for estimating whether an event detector, say an image-based plume detector, is making accurate predictions or whether it's confused. They don't do too well with continuous variables, but when you only have discrete ones, they're blazingly fast computationally. And you don't have to choose. You can use both types of models, factor graphs for continuous variables, HMM for discrete ones, and then display their results to the users where and when they need them. This brand of state estimation is model-based, which brings us to a key knowledge engineering challenge. How do we keep these multiple models in sync? These kind of issues compound as a mission progresses, since not only do we get to know our spacecraft better, but the spacecraft itself changes as it ages in the space environments and things break. It would be wonderful if one could build a sort of a reference model that captures the system at very high fidelity, and then you could just computationally generate all the models that you need automatically from it. However, we don't think that at the level of fidelity needed for operations of autonomous spacecraft, there is a realistic way of automatically generating models from a reference that compares reasonably with the work that human analysts could do. So how do we address this? We think of this as a people and process problem, and we build a workflow that ensures that the models are updated in lockstep. If any subsystem wants to update their model, they should run the change by an engineer wearing a novel hat, the keeper of the model's role, whose entire job is to ensure that the changes are synchronized with the factor graph and the HMM and the simulation and whatnot. How do they do this? Through dialogue and subdramatic experience and meetings, as we always do. We know how to update individual models, the key, we believe, is to have a process, a workflow, that makes room for such model updates and ensures they are first-class citizens in operations as opposed to an afterthought. Finally, we display these results to the autonomy engineer. Front and center, we show the activities that the onboard spacecraft planner scheduled. We can scrap back and forth in time to see how the plan evolved as the spacecraft state changed. On the left, we show the relevant event records, EVRs, from the flight software, and at the bottom, we show the estimated state of the spacecraft and the row measurements that inform the estimate. At the bottom left, we have the ability to compare all of these with predictions that were done by Uplink before we received the data, which is critical to assess whether our prediction models are accurate. And for event detection, we also have a pop-up shown on the right that shows the information the spacecraft used to make its decision and estimates the confidence of the decision based on additional knowledge that we have on the ground. Today, we presented a software framework currently under development for operations planning of highly autonomous spacecraft. We addressed a number of knowledge engineering challenges, both in uplink, downlink, and the interaction between these two phases. So where do we go from here? We are building and refining the tools presented in this paper, going from mockups to actual code. And we plan to test this with users through a series of user studies, the first one in September, so we can refine the design, gather user recommendations, and move closer to operations of autonomous spacecraft. Thank you very much.